could hear this thumping noise that sounded like a um, nail gun. There was just so much blood. So many, de you know, you know I'm in, in the place where she deal with dead bodies, that's part and parcel of your job. But I doubt with so many dead bodies, all together. I think everybody that was killed that day, it was meant to be. He chose his targets. 17 definites. Yeah, and a colleague of mine came up the road and pulled up and said, well, uh, do you know where Southview is? And I said, well, what's the problem? He said, well, there's been a bit of a shooting. View over Southview and you can see Michael Ryan shooting this gun. The whole start of the thing was the rape that went sadly wrong. If um, he'd have carried out the rape, things might have been different. You get all these stories, oh, I, I was um, friends with him and what have you, but he wasn't, he was a loner. Nobody knew him. I mean, every, everybody that Ryan aimed at, once he pulled the trigger, that was it. it was, they were history. But Ryan had loads of ammunition inside the house. Loads, far more. He was making his own ammunition. The majority of what he had wasn't bloody legal. It was homemade stuff. And he left there and started making his way back towards home. But went into the petrol station. And the girl there, um, he filled up the car with petrol. And pointed the gun at her. And the bullet went through the, the window. And we came across somebody that had been shot. Uh, by Fox's shop. He'd had his throat shot out. Just the way up from that was Trev Wainwright, a um, colleague's dad. He'd been shot in the head and the throat. And we went up a little bit further, got up to the crossroads, and turned left towards the football club. And there was the taxi driver in the middle of the road. He'd been shot in the forehead. And his mother, apparently, according to wit eyewitnesses, said, what the hell have you done? And with that, he turned around and shot her. Next door, there was two bodies in the garden. And then his mother was just a little way up from the police car. We found one of the guns, uh, semi-automatic. We went up, there was um, a car with two people in. One had obviously been shot, and then there was a police car in front of it um, with Roger Britton in. He had been shot several times, um, front and back. Tre Trevor Wainwright's mum, she was in one of the houses, and they, they were worried about what was happening. And you could see blood around the car where she'd got out of the passenger seat and had gone round, because mm. she was shot um, through her left hand and through her left breast. There was another couple, and he'd shot the husband and the wife in, in the kitchen. Mm. Um, and we gradually made our way back down. And then we found a woman that, um, she got a couple of kids, and three bullets had been fired into her car. But luckily enough, everyone had missed. There was two in the engine compartment. One had gone through the engine compartment, and it actually burnt the hand. Uh, the amazing thing was the silence, the total silence. The colleague that I was with, Chris Larkin, he, he went to pieces after that, and he, had, he eventually ended up committing suicide because he couldn't deal with what he'd seen. Did the police learn it from that? No. But the police is still going to make mistakes. These days, don't go and check on the security of the weapons. And they should do. The next question is, did he shoot himself, or was he shot? Now he shot himself. If I'd have had a bloody gun, I'd have shot him. But basically, that's it. That's the story.